Okay, welcome to this first example in the series that we're working on, which is building Data Studio reports with Search Console for SEO analysis. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new Search Console data connection. And here we go, we're going, we created a new Search Console. We're going to select the data source, which in this case is the Helpfully site connection to Search Console. We're going to give it a new name. So tip here is when you get going with this stuff, you're going to have lots of connectors. So make sure you give everything a very easy to sort and meaningful name. Here we're using the site name. We're specifying that it's Search Console and this particular one is example one. So we've got all of our basic fields in here. Next what we're going to do is we're going to add a new custom dimension. So this custom dimension is going to be called query category. So we're going to give it that name. And we're going to use a case statement in here. Uh, I've already got one made up, so I'm just going to paste it in there. And this case statement is basically going to filter the queries looking for why, what, when, how, where. And there it is. You'll find that in the blog post. And we'll save it. So. Now we have our new custom dimension for question type queries. We're also going to create another custom dimension and this one's going to be query type and all this is going to do is separate out question queries from other queries. So make it much much easier to filter. You can use standard filters on your data studio. What I find is it's much easier to create uh, a new custom dimension. In this case, it only has two values. We're going to use that in the next step so that we can easily and quickly filter our queries between question queries and other queries. So there you can see the two new custom dimensions. So. Now that we've got our basic setup, we're going to go through and create a new report. So back to the main screen, back to reports, start a new report. It's going to ask us to start off with a connection, a data source. And there's our data source that we just created. So we're going to add that, simply add it to the report. We'll wait for a second for it to load up going to change the name of the report and we're putting a version number in here just so we can separate this from other versions of this workbench. Uh, it's a really nice idea to put in a version number. It's very simple to copy a Data Studio report and just create a new version of it. Okay, first of all what we're going to do is add a simple table this is a good way to check values. And I'm going to go through some of the setup here and skip through some of the style uh, details. But we'll do the basic setup. First we want our query. Then what we want to do is add in our query category. And then query type. Very good. So we can see we've got all of those in there. We can see we already have one correctly labeled as a question and a how question. <clears throat> then we'll put some more metrics in there. 
we want to see site click through rate and average position and number of clicks. So now we've got all of our fields for the basic table and we'll be using this table later on. So when you first start off with the table it's got some default settings on it and we usually want to get rid of those. So here it is after cleanup. I get rid of the row numbers, um, even out the fields, make sure that everything is um, set to wrap, both the body and the header. And here we've put in changes over time. One of the things that you want to do if you're working with average positions, since lower is better, is you want to change those colors so that a lower position over time is green and a higher position is red. So here's our basic finished product. We have bar charts for impressions and clicks. We're going to edit this again or not. We'll put in some uh, heat maps there just so we can identify things easier. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add in a dynamic data selector. And what this will allow us to do is it will allow us to connect to any Search Console data source. This means that we can reuse this right away for any property we have access to. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to a more exciting property. This is Spirits Review. And it automatically loads in all of the data plus it also captures those unique new custom fields that we had and we'll show you that in just a second so we've also put a date range selector in here so that we can modify dates always a good idea so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to create a little simple selector so that we can see query type So this is going to act as a filter on that table. And to start off with, all we're going to do is create a simple drop-down selector. And here we can filter for question type queries. And this has all of our questions in it. And here I've created a bar chart that uses the interactive filter I'll show you where that is in a minute. And this allows you a little more visual representation. It helps double up as a selector and a chart to give you some more information. So you can see it works just like the drop down filter. In some cases, a drop down filter is better if you want to uh, look at everything except a single value. Now here I've created a table to use as a selector and all we've done in the table the only dimension in there is the query category and you can see we also have other in there and in this case we may not want to use other so we're going to add a filter to this and you can see we have the interactive application filter on there Sorry, we'll just go back and view this for a second so you can see how this works. So, here we go. You can, of course, take and export your results by using the right click on the table. So here we're filtering just for the how questions and going through the different types of questions. You can see this operates as a very nice, easy to use filter. And when we go back, we're going to select all. So. Now we've got our basic setup. 
We're going to modify this a little bit just to show you a little bit more of what you can do to modify it um, and talk a little bit about how to actually use this for actionable results. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to modify the query category table there. We're going to add a filter and we're going to get rid of that other selection because we don't really care about other in this little report. We want to focus on the questions. So we created a new filter that filters out other and now you can see we just have selections for queries. Now we can get rid of this little table. We can do a little bit of reformatting. There we go. And you can see that this still works very nicely. So the next question is, you know, how do we actually use this? We're going to go back to Spirits Review since, like I said, it's a little bit more exciting. How would you actually use this in real life? Well, questions are extremely important. You want to know what type of questions people are asking there. Nice long tail queries and they get people to your site. These are ones that we're already scoring for and we're actually have a pretty good average position on a lot of those and a lot of them have a pretty decent uh, amount of impressions. However, you can see that we just really don't have a lot of site click through. We don't see a lot of clicks, even though we have a really good position and uh, good impressions. So that indicates that we need to do some modification in the title and meta description tags to kind of advertise those pages and get people to click through. That will help not just our click through rate, but over time it should help our ranking position as well. And you can see we've got a bunch of uh, very similar kind of queries here. They revolve around shots. We actually, how many shots are in a bottle? We actually have a page that answers that question, has a little calculator on it. And it answers those questions indirectly. It's a little, the title of it is a little uh, more conversational. So we might want to put a little more clear language in there spiff up that article a little bit so it answers those questions and again we'd want to change the meta description tags to get people to click through. You can see we've got some increases and decreases here and again we've changed the colors on those to indicate that a drop is actually a good thing so it's in green. So again, we're looking at what it's kind of interesting. We have what color is Jaeger, uh, what color and British is uh, Bombay Sapphire. So we've got some opportunities there. Apparently we're sort of answering that question, but I don't think we really have those uh, answers to those on the pages. So it would be worth putting a kind of more description on there. And um, again, We've got some impressions. We've got pretty decent average position. So we probably want a little more description uh, in our meta description tag to get people to click through. So gathering up all of these things gives you a real actionable indication of how to make changes to your site. These are people who are definitely looking for things that you already have on your site and you're partially answering the questions, we want to really answer those questions. Thanks for joining me for this example. Uh, there will be more at helpfully.com. We'll be continuing with more examples in this series. As always, please leave a comment or go to the blog post at helpfully.com and leave a comment or you can always contact me on Twitter. I am at Helpfully. See you next time.